Hello, everyone. This is Kevin Siegel. Frequently, when I teach my e-learning classes, I am asked from students who have existing PowerPoint presentations, what's the best way to take PowerPoint and get e-learning out of it? I'm going to show you two potential workflows. One, Camtasia Studio. The other, Adobe Presenter. On my screen, I've got a standard Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. If you want to follow along with me and you have both Camtasia Studio and Presenter, you can use any PowerPoint presentation you have on your computer. If I go from slide to slide to slide, you'll see it's really just a standard presentation. First thing I'm going to do is show you how to take this presentation into Camtasia Studio, and then I'll show you how to use Adobe Presenter to create e-learning out of this presentation. On my add-ins group on the ribbon, you can see that I've got some recording tools at the left here. The reason those tools are on my computer, I've installed Camtasia Studio on the computer prior to making this video. If I click record, what's going to happen is PowerPoint is going to be shown to you as if it were being shown to an audience, and I'll click through it like a presenter would. During that time, it's going to be as if I turn the video camera onto my screen. I'll be using the Camtasia recorder to do a click-by-click work through or rehearsal of my presentation. Let's go ahead and show you how that works. I'll click record. You can see in the bottom right here I'm being told to click here to start the recording which I'll do. And now it's as if my screen were actually being recorded with a video camera. So as I click I'm going through the PowerPoint presentation. I'll press escape to stop the recording process. When I do, I get hit with this dialog box asking me if I want to stop the recording, which I will. I'll click Stop Recording. I'm being asked to save the presentation. I'll call this S3 Policies 2 and click Save. Now I'm being asked if I'm going to use the Camtasia Studio for PowerPoint, what would I like to do? Produce the recording or edit the recording and I'm going to edit it. I'll click OK. Now I'm being asked if I'd like to include closed captions for Section 508 for Citizens with Disabilities. Certainly I could click yes but for this demonstration I'm going to click no. Now I need to determine the size for my video. I'll leave the defaults and click OK. And at this point, I'm inside the Camtasia Studio working in a CamProj file. So if you have skill with Camtasia Studio, you would now move forward, working on the timeline here, adding callouts, adding graphics, adding animations, adding quiz. You would go to the Tools menu and use all these features here as you normally would in the studio. And that's great. The concern I have is twofold. First of all, you have to have skill with Camtasia Studio to be able to use Camtasia Studio, of course. Secondly, because when I created my presentation, my recording of PowerPoint, if I have any changes that need to be made to that PowerPoint presentation, since we're really talking about two different programs, I'm going to have to go back into PowerPoint, make the edits, then re-record using that Camtasia recorder, and then get back to here. So there's a bit of a disconnect and trouble if time is of the essence. So I'm going to go ahead and close the Camtasia project and I'm not going to save it. Here I am back in PowerPoint. I want to talk about the second option for you, Adobe Presenter. I have an Adobe Presenter tab on my ribbon because I've installed Adobe Presenter on the computer. So if I go to Adobe Presenter, I now have all of these tools basically part of the ribbon within PowerPoint. Any editing that I do occurs directly, basically, in Microsoft PowerPoint. So you leverage your Microsoft PowerPoint skills with a few tools to create e-learning. As an example, I can use the record option over on the far left to record my audio. If I want to record video, I can certainly use the record video option here. If you've got Adobe Captivate on your computer, you can also record software simulations. And one of my favorite features 
of Adobe Presenter, something that's totally unique and stands apart versus Camtasia is these interactions. If I click here and choose Insert Interaction, a dialog box appears basically prompting me to pick an interaction. Play around with these if you'd like. One that I've used a ton is Process Circle. And the way it works is you add your labels and your content, and then you click OK. If your learner clicks the labels, they actually spin this little wheel around. And so you can take what would be considered dead text or static text and bring it to life, which I think is fantastic. I'm going to press Cancel. Another unique feature in Presenter versus Camtasia is you get these characters here. If I click Character, I've got some categories here, including medicine. From here, I'll select one of my actors, select a pose, click OK, and my graphics are added to my slide. Basically, these are pictures with the green screen background removed, and you can use these characters as guides in your presentation and work with them, resize them, do what you need to like any other graphic in PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Certainly, as with Camtasia, you can add a quiz. You can control the look and feel of your presentation with themes. And when it comes time to track learner success in your quiz, Presenter comes with a wonderful assortment of collaboration tools so you can track how people are doing. Finally, when I go to publish my lesson with Presenter, I have a unique option not found in Camtasia, Adobe PDF. The bottom line here is I can make PDFs directly from my Presenter eLearning project, and once that PDF is done, it will contain all the multimedia, it stands alone, it's something you can email to your learners, it's fantastic. What people don't understand about these PDFs is that they can contain full multimedia. So you can have the videos, you can have the interactions, you can have the quiz, and all that interactivity stays in the presentation when you make the PDF. I'll go ahead and press close. There's one final thing you get when you purchased Adobe Presenter, and this is probably my favorite. I'm going to minimize my presentation here. Here is the Adobe Presenter Video Creator app. It is wonderful. I use the Video Creator to create a video for a conference I'm going to be attending. And if I press the play button here, check it out. I recorded this video, everything you see, in about five minutes. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's Kevin Siegel talking to you from Annapolis, Maryland. And I'm real excited about my upcoming trip to Bangalore for TC World 2014. During my sessions, I'm going to be talking about things at Sizzle, a little bit of sourcing, a little bit of e-learning. Let me give you an overview of my three presentations for the... Right, so I just paused it. Did you notice how my video went to the side automatically and shared space with the screen? That was so easy using this tool. Down here on the bottom left, the yellow icon means you're only seeing the presenter. If I drag the playhead back to the left, you can see, watch this. Everybody is so it's just me, right? If I take the playhead to the right, now I've slid off to the right. So the video now is sharing space with the screen, and all I did was click this tool right here. And you can see how long the presentation is showing me on the right. So the color coding is kind of important. I can be on the left, I can be on the right, I can be just the presenter showing, or you can see just the presentation. No problem, just click the four buttons. It doesn't get any easier than that. You'll also notice that there's a gray space here. If I position the playhead and begin to move, you can see in this area there was a part of the video I didn't want. So all I did was use the trim tool to get rid of it. That was simple enough. And finally, if there's an area of my screen that I want to zoom in on, all I have to do is use the pan and zoom feature, drag this little resizing handle, and you can see how that controls how close the learner is to my screen. Super, super easy. That's it, folks. So taken as a whole, when we're talking about the workflow between Microsoft PowerPoint, 
getting it into e-learning. Camtasia Studio, sort of like pointing a video camera at your screen, or Adobe Presenter. And if you use Adobe Presenter, the thing I love is, first of all, you're staying inside Microsoft PowerPoint, and you get that video creation tool on top of that.